I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your new West Side buddy as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from my home office in Makiki and from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Think Tech Hawaii features the hearts of about 45 different and colorful show hosts. Today, we will be talking story with my West Side buddy, Diamond Garcia, who is a voice for change. From public housing to public service. service. Wow, what a journey. Today, we shall be speaking with this young, energetic man after Keakua's heart. We will see Diamond's heart and why Diamond wants to represent his people of Nanakuli Coast and the West Side. We certainly need more diamonds in our dark and sometimes lost world. We need more diamonds in our government instead of those zirconians, get it, that exist. <laughs> we want the truth as we know that the truth sells, set us free. What I would like you to take away from today's discussion is simply that we need more real gems like Diamond. His goals will be life-changing for many. Aloha and ikumomai Diamond. Aloha, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, I'm excited to just talk story and share this time with you and your heart with the community because I know you are a hard worker and <laughs> it's only just beginning. So I want to just take us back, Diamond, just share with us about a little bit about your childhood when you were Keiki. Sure. sure. Well, thank you so much. You know, I was born and raised out here on the leeward side of Oahu my entire life. Um, <clears throat> Makaha, Wainai, uh, Waipahu, uh, Wahiwa, just going back and forth, back and forth from public housing to public housing. That was my life growing up. And like you mentioned earlier, you know, from public housing to public service, my roots really was the typical West Side life. I was raised in public housing programs and food stamps and welfare. And so I know the struggle that so many of, of our local families have to go through on, on, on a daily basis. And uh, so, yeah. Wow. Wow, that's a journey. I mean, and so that's really important because you were on the inside and now you're on the outside and you're still on the inside in your heart and you <laughs> understand it. That's so right. you want to make a difference because you can, because you lived it. And that's, that's so right. important. Absolutely. So important. Wow. So I know that you are a man of God. So please yeah. share with us your heart for your community and sure. share with us, where did it all begin? Sure. So, uh, yeah. So long story short, because I could really take hours doing this. Wow. Raised out we have here. some time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, my, I was raised in a household surrounded by drugs, drug dealing, um, crime, um, alcohol, you know, so like I mentioned earlier, that typical life for so many families out here on the West side and for mm -hmm. so many kids growing up out here on the West side. And uh, what happened was at the age of 12 years old, I found the book. And this book was called The Great Controversy. It was written by Ellen G. White in the 1800s. And I found it actually in the bottom of this box of cookbooks at my grandma's house. Wow. And I said, what, what is this book doing in a box of cookbooks? You know, that whole day, it was summer break. I was 12 years old. I, I was just scrolling through a bunch of cookbooks. And um, I was looking at recipes and things like that. But I got to the bottom of the box and there was a book on Bible prophecy. It was called The Great Controversy. And I said, Wow. What is this about? So I, I, I opened to the first page of the book, and the first words was, if thou hadst known. 12 years old now. I said, what in the world does that even mean? If thou? <laughs> so I closed the book. I put it away. I said, I, had, you know, I, I don't know. I went on playing that day. I came back in, in the house from playing, and I saw the book again. And this time, I went to the back of the book because that's where the pictures were. I was 12 years old. I, I saw this, this man in the sky with a bunch of angels around him. And I said, what is this all about? So I read the chapter, God's people delivered. And I was reading this chapter that, that was describing the second coming of Christ. And I said, wow, this is actually an amazing event. And so from that point on, I, I, I got involved in, in, a, in the local church. And uh, fast forward, you know, six, seven, eight years, um, I... I been traveling the world preaching the gospel of Christ. I've you know been to uh, Europe, all across the U.S., Canada, Mexico, South America, Asia, the, the South Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, all over the world preaching the gospel of Christ. So, wow, oh, what a remarkable story! And you know, can you can you see the picture and the the journey that it just makes so much sense? You're looking in a box, of, and it was all cookbooks, right? Okay? Exactly, and so. That's when you started to you started cooking and cooking <laughs> with a heart to serve the people and then all the different recipes. So then you were given the recipes of life. 
right, right there. Right. And so, you know, that you were at 12 years old, so brilliant, a young man, to see the, the, the purpose of your life. Right. And how blessed are you? Because many of the, you know, many of us would not have seen the purpose at that very right. young age. And then they would have to go through some bumps and then more bumps and then right. realize, oh my gosh, maybe I should have done this, or maybe I should focus on this instead of right. that. And yeah. so you are truly a blessed young man. And I'm, I'm, I'm just so excited to hear that part of the story and just realize how important that was the cookbook, the recipe, and the, 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 the vision that he had, had planted into your head. And yeah. at that age, you were able to see it and take it and run with it. That's right. Wow. Wow. God is good. God is good. God is good. Okay. <laughs> so now, what would make a young man think about running for an office of public service versus just hanging out? You live in Waianae, the most beautiful coastline in all that the sure state. Is. That's right. I mean, and then, but shh, don't tell everybody. Shh. Okay. Because, you know, I'm born and raised Miley. Right. And so right. I know, I know the beauty out there. It's the West Side charm <laughs> and the West Side beauty. And it is God's best kept secret out there. And oh. I know we just want so much more for the people out there. Right. So, right. It's, you know, what, what made you start running for office? You could be surfing all day, like all the other <laughs> the brothers and all the other Wendy's out there that still surfs. <laughs> What made you decide to run for office? <clears throat> so, I, you know, I was traveling the world, flying here, flying there constantly, sometimes three, three countries in one month, just constantly going, going, going. And I would always come back to Hawaii to rest and mm -hmm. recuperate here in my apartment in Nanakuli. And mm -hmm. I would just look around my community. And, you know, there's so much hurt and suffering and addictions and crime and, and uh, lots of issues that are facing this community that I said, you know what? I just don't see people rising up to the occasion to do something about it. And so um, I was approached by, you know, by uh, some people and they said, Diamond, you should run for office. I said, uh, no, I would never run for office. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm traveling the world. I'm preaching the gospel. I love oh what I do. God. I don't have time to run for office. Anyway, um, it was the next two days I literally got like 25 phone calls from a bunch of people who, who heard my story. I spoke at the local Republican state convention and they're like, you should run for office. I said, Oh no, 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 no. Don't look at me. Don't look at me <laughs> anyway. But within two weeks I had so many phone calls and I prayed to God. I said, God, if this is your will, then make it evidently clear. And it was pretty clear that people wouldn't stop calling. And so in 2018, I first ran for state Senate against a 14-year wow. incumbent, Miley Shimabuku. Wow. And people said, oh, that's impossible. You're not going to get over 20%. You know, you're, you're, you're running as a Republican. Nobody really knows your name on a grand scale. And I said, well, you know what? The Lord said to run, so I'm going to run. And so I said, well, I don't know what to do. But, you know, uh, for, for six years growing up, I sold books door to door from 12 years old to all, all the way through high school. I knocked on doors and sold books. And that's what paid my way through Hawaiian Mission Academy. So I said, I have no problem knocking on doors. I can do that. I see some guys with a bunch of signs and they're waving. I can do that. And, uh, you know, I can call people. I can do that. So I said, well, here we go. Let's campaign. So in, in 2018, I, you know, I, I printed a bunch of signs and banners and we got everything going. We, we had a ground team. We were knocking on doors. I got bit by four dogs. Up by my belly. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just a crazy campaign trail. But as I ran first time candidate, okay, nobody really knew who I was against a 14 year incumbent who never really had strong challengers as a Republican. I garnered 44% of the vote in a Senate. Oh. And people were like, wait a minute, who are you? I said, I don't, I, I'm just Diamond Garcia. I, I, I ain't nothing special to me, but you know what? <laughs> With God, all things are possible. And so uh, from the, I, I lost the election, of course. I, it was a close race. Um, right. And, that is a darn close race for a first-time candidate coming out of the gate. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> and running against a veteran, uh, a Democratic right. veteran, that's... That's commendable, Diamond. And, you know, I'm sure she has uh, great things to say about how you ran your campaign. Because, yeah. as you mentioned, she probably went through a lot of campaigning without a lot of strong competition like yourself. Right. So that was all, again, um, in, in his timing of your life right. for right. you to have that experience and to run in the Senate race. Yeah. That was Wow. And that's a lot of books you sold to get yourself to 
Hawaii, HMA, Hawaii Missions Academy. Yeah. Yeah. That is discipline. That is uh, obedience you know, growing at its up best. It, yeah, it was six days a week. I would knock on doors six days a week from 5.30 in the evening to 8.30 uh -huh. at night uh, for, for six years. And that's what paid my way through Hawaii Mission Academy. Yeah. <sighs> I can't believe that. That is too surreal. And so tell me now, you lived in Nanakuli and you attended HMA. Is that the one on? Well, at that time, I was in Makaha. So waking up in the morning at like 4 o'clock and catching the 420 bus, going all the way to town, going to school, jumping on like the 5 o'clock bus to come home and then go home, grab my books and go knocking on doors. And, you know, it was, it was surreal. But that's, you know, and so I wanted a Christian education. I wanted to get a, a good education for myself. And I said, well, you know what? Ain't nobody going to do it for me. My parents are in housing projects. They're broke. They're on drugs. They're low income. You know, they're on food stamps. But I, I wanted to rise up. And so, you know, when, when people tell me, you know, they have all the excuses in the world not yes. to do something. I said, you know yes. what? There is no excuse. If you work hard, if you want something. Amen. You, you, God will come to your side and aid you and you can become and, and do anything you want to do. We live in the greatest country in the world. There is no excuses for anything. There's so much opportunity. People are, are wanting, to, wanting to come into this country for opportunity and we have it all here for us. And many of us don't take advantage of, of those opportunities. And so anyway, um, fast forwarding to, to 2020, I'm currently now running for state house here. Uh, on the Waianae Coast. So District 43 spans from Maili, Nanakuli, Ko'olina, Honokai Hale, Campbell Industrial, Kalai Loa, and a small portion of Eva uh, villages. And so it, it's a pretty large district. In the district, I have an airport, I have landfills, I have H Power, I have a, a, a resort, I have a Hawaiian homelands, I have lots of different things, a power plant just in this wow. one district. You know, so, so, so it's almost like a small city in one little house district. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, but I currently serve on the neighborhood board. I was elected in, in 2019. I got the highest votes on the board against 25 year veterans. Um, and you know, um, I currently serve as the chair of health, education, public safety, and parks and, and, and recreation committees on the neighborhood board. So lots of work to do. I've been involved in my community. I'm, I'm now running for state house. You know, this seat, District 43, was held for four years by a very good friend of mine and your friend is well, Andrea Tupola, we all love her. Yes. A very strong, God-fearing Republican representative that she yes. was. She served for four years. In 2018, she ran for governor, and we yes. had someone lined up to uh, to take the seat. But what happened was last minute, we discovered that she was a U.S. national, not a U.S. citizen. And so uh -huh. she was disqualified last minute. And so Stacey and Eli, the current representative, she won by default with zero votes. She wasn't even on the ballot in the general wow. election. So she, okay. so she got a free ride in, and here we are right. in, in 2020, and it's time to take the seat back. Wow. You know, but I want your constituents, your neighbors, and mommies and daddies, okay, yeah. even without politics involved, look at this young man, that he had the diligence, the obedience, the tenacity, the hard work ethic that is so desired in our young people these days. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what drove him for six years to get on that bus, not from Nanakuli, which is a little bit closer, but from Makaha <laughs> on the public bus system, get his, his himself to HMA, um, Hawaii Missions Academy, study, do well, come home, sell books so he can pay his tuition. And of course you really live, all things are possible through that's God. Right. That's when right, which strengthens us and yeah. so that is so powerful so as i said just take all the politics away just vote for the man with this integrity and um i know you're going to work as hard for the community as you did for yourself because this is what you were raised and groomed up to be mm -hmm. so not even a miracle just god will place you in the rightful position that he Thank has groomed you up to this point and I am so honored to just be speaking with you and, and just, well, just, thank you. yeah, so, wow. I'm, but as I said, parents, moms, and dads, <laughs> <laughs> look at that, okay? And no excuses, guys. I'm tired. I'm busy. I don't feel well. You yeah. know, no, no. I, I myself, I mean, it must be the why not a West Side Air. <laughs> when people tell me they're tired, I don't believe them. When they tell me they're busy, I don't believe them because like you, 
work yeah. 20 days, uh, 20 hour days, seven days a week for 20 years, retired at 50. But you know what? It's like I worked 40 years. So it's like not I'm 60. It's like I'm 80. Right. But <laughs> but you know what? And I was able to retire and now I'm serving in Amen. a capacity like you are. But yeah. I'm going to support people like you who have the vision to make our communities better. Thank you. I so, wow. <laughs> so I know that you love your community. It's already proven, yeah. you know, what you have done thus far to make a difference for so many people of the West Side. And again, how would you encourage the Keiki to get more involved and to have a, a bit of what you experienced as you were growing right. up? Right. Well, you know, my, my passion really is, um, I currently serve as a chair of the education committee on the neighborhood board. And my passion really is to talk to our children in the school systems early on, before they hit that adolescence puberty age, early on when they're in elementary school, you know, to yes. instill in them the principles of hard work and ethics. And the fact that just because you were born and raised in a unfortunate uh, circumstance or family, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that that dictates your future. I have five siblings. They all went down the same path that my parents led them to, and they're homeless today. They're drug addicts today. They're alcoholics today. Some are in Pokai Bay, some in Waipahu, chronics, homeless, living at the park, sleeping mm -hmm. on the sidewalk, you know, and that could have been me. But right. with God's help, I told myself, you know what? I can become anything I want to be in this country. And so I rose up to the occasion. I said, I, but no one can do it for me. I have to do it myself. So I got out there and knocked on doors, worked super hard, did odd jobs, a bunch of different things just to get me somewhere else. And that's the, the principles of hard work that our children need to understand and yes. learn. Yes. These days. You know, there's lots of movements happening across this country where children and, and even young adults are feeling entitled. Free education for all. Free this, no, free that. And free, no. like, guys, you don't understand it. No. Things aren't free. you got to pay Nothing for it. Nothing is free. You know, and so anyway, you know, that's why I tend to be, you know, more conservative in my politics, because I understand hard work. I understand what it means to work super hard to get something. So, yeah. Wow. And hard work is the, the, the base of our or the foundation of our country, of our family. That's right. That's right. You know, all uh, like my family, my mom is Japanese, Okinawa, my dad is Chinese. So they came here, their parents came here as sugarcane pineapple slaves yeah. and they worked hard and yeah. you know when i look back they were so blessed because they know what it means to sweat and right. earn money and, and have that little bit of extra yep. that they work so hard towards i mean my mom she worked as a waitress and she got wow. three of us into public school i mean i'm sorry private school so my brothers did go to st st louis and i went wow. to marino and i lived in waipahu after living wow away from uh, Miley and my uh -huh. mom worked as a waitress um, so that she would earn that extra money to send us um, to those opportunities and um, wonderful yeah I mean and that's so the American dream you know yeah. work hard and and you know and really lots of these immigrants and people who come in um, legally uh, they they want the best for their children, you know, and, and so they're, they're, they're willing to work two, three, four jobs and almost yes. kills them, but they want to make sure that their children succeed. And that's really what this country is all about. Right. And that's the whole generation that we need to continue to build up. So that's our, right. Seeing my parents work so hard, so I was mentored that way. They didn't give me a lot of like, love you, huggy, huggy, love. It was just they're working. We got to take care of the home. They cook. We clean. We had chores. We knew what it meant to work hard, and and look at what's the, what it created. I mean, you're just a different gem, Diamond. You're just a different gem that you were self motivated, and that you could have that um, obedience and the tenacity yeah. to continue, and that's that's an admirable. But not not everyone has those qualities. So that's when you got to step back and realize that. But if you just encourage them to you know, stay one more hour and pick up more rubbish and just push them, yeah. push them, push yeah. them. And then yeah. they're like, hey, uncle, I tired already. No, bro, just one more bag, one more hour That's of picking right. up rubbish, That's right. one more hour. Let's go. You can do it. If it's too heavy, you take two trips, yeah. you know, but don't, no excuses. That's and right. that's no exactly what you, yeah, you're saying we're enabling them to be a lazy exactly. generation, but we need to pick out those other diamonds in the rough as well that's right. to that's encourage right. them to encourage them and to build them up so that your community can get stronger and better. And that's, that's right. what I know that's what your heart is. <laughs> so, you know, 
I want to, of course, I have to ask you this question about how has COVID-19 affected mm. the people of the West Side? And um, yeah. do you feel that the COVID is under control there? Well, you know, so COVID-19 really has affected not just the West Side, our, our state, um, but in our country, and not just physically, perhaps, but more economically. And, you know, what's, uh, what's unfortunate is... Um, that lots of people on the west side have been laid off because they work blue collar jobs. You know, they work in the hotel industry, uh, yes. they work in the hospitality industry, they work in the food industry. You know, uh, lots of small businesses out here. You know, uh, the farmers who rely on selling their produce to the hotels, but now there's no tourists to buy the, the stuff, so they're, they're hurting. Uh, and so, COVID really has affected us more economically than it has physically. Yes, there ha there has been. Um, you know, some cases of COVID out here, and, and I think one or two deaths perhaps on the entire West Side. Um, <clears throat> but that they, of course, were old and, and had uh, pre existing health conditions, you know, just mm -hmm. like the flu would affect you and, uh, and lots of other types of uh, viruses, right? Anyway, right. but of COVID economically has impacted many, many, many families out here right. on the West Side. And so I worked a lot with Andrea Topola in getting over 13,000 meals to families out here on the Waianae Coast wow. throughout this, this COVID pandemic, you know, and I was helping out with the Waianae Coast Community Foundation in hosting drive through food banks. And I literally saw people come through there who were <clears throat> hiding their face as they were driving through because they were embarrassed to be in a yeah. food bank line. You know, they've never done this before, but they lost their jobs. They had to pay their mortgage and they have no food left. So, so they have to resort to a little box of, zucchini carrots potatoes and you know whatever it is just to get their family by and that's what we're facing right now you know uh, right. We're, we're, we're facing economic hardship and it's not fair to the families out here uh to, to what they're going through so wow yeah and you know um i guess you know i always try to see the bright side of everything mm -hmm. and so for those friends or neighbors that you know are embarrassed i right. um, just want you to know that it could be any one of us. And that's, that's why right. we're all here. We're in it together to support you in any which way we can. And you know, when you receive that food, just take it as a blessing because I know that you've probably were the one that was always giving. And so now to receive, that's mm -hmm. very difficult for people who are very giving. And yeah. so we have to learn that we have to learn to receive and be gracious and you know, and, and, and just be joyful right. that we're able to receive. So that when we receive it, you know, you mahalo ke akua, right? Yeah. And then you, you now know. So it's a building. It's a building tool that God has given to us. So That's then right. when we get back on our feet, we're That's never going right. to, you know, we're never going to turn our backs on the people that need. And right. so we're going to turn around and continue to need, give. And that's what this is all about. So with that, it may seem dark and embarrassing, but it's not. It's a growing tool that he has placed in our lives to yeah. make us better people, better neighbors, yeah. better community servants, and, and more diamonds so that you too can turn around and make a difference and help. Yeah. Well, you know, I know that most young men on the West Side, as I mentioned, I mean, I need to, I still surf. They <laughs> surf and they hang out at beaches and they probably get into some trouble here and there, you know, whatever they decide, sometimes not the right choice. But right. how do you enjoy spending your time? Well, I, know you're, like, I know you're doing the public, the neighborhood board and all that. That's like a right. big responsibility, Diamond. It is, it is, you know, and I, I really enjoy talking to people, meeting people. And, you know, as a preacher, as a pastor, as a minister, I, I love sharing the gospel with people. And that's not always, you know, the Bible. That could be a health message that could be, you know, just giving somebody a hug after, you know, they've been going through things or showing Christ through different ways. I love doing that. And so campaigning, I get to knock on doors and meet people and pray with people and introduce them to different things. And it, I, that's what I enjoy doing, knocking on doors, knocking on doors. I did that for six years, right, throughout high school. So <laughs> and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, first nature to me. And, of course, I, I, I love the water like you. I sometimes will wake up in the morning at, like, 6 o'clock before the sun is really up, and I go down to Yolks and, and down to Makua, and, oh, it's just so beautiful out there, you know, and there's nobody okay. on the beach and seeing the seals on the on the beach, and I just walk down and get my, my morning walk in and, it's just relaxing, you know. I get to just look at and behold the the wondrous creations of God, and that's really what recharges me. 
Wow. Yes, and we all need that. And wow. make sure you get a lot of that in, in your beginning of your day, in the middle, throughout to refresh, because it can be very uh, grueling. And um, right. you need to refresh. And another topic that we're going to talk about that's grueling is I know that sex trafficking is a very yes. hot topic. Yes. And I know you're very aware of this situation. And I know it's all around, but mm -hmm. being that we're from the West Side, we're going to focus in on the West Side. And I know you put on talks and stuff, but what are you doing about it thus far in your community? Sure. sure. Thank you. You know, um, just last uh, Wednesday, we. Uh, put on a, a protect our Keiki town hall meeting uh, in Waina, you know, just to bring awareness and education that sex trafficking isn't always the, the white Manapula van of that creepy guy who drives around and kidnaps kids. I mean, that happens, you know, sometimes, but that's not really 90% uh, of all the sex trafficking that goes on is, is, is really things that we that we don't expect our own family members, our own friends, right. our own uncles, right. our own fathers, our own whoever it is. Clo the the closer they are to you, unfortunately, stats show that that's where the risks are, you right. know. And so, bringing awareness to our families, because you know, I was shocked to find out and and even realize that one out of four children have been touched inappropriately molested. That's a that's a lot. I mean, one out of four that is a lot, and that is unacceptable. And we need to bring awareness to people, teach kids early on, you know what what is inappropriate that way they know because a lot of kids they trust their uncles they trust their father they trust yeah. their brothers they trust yeah. their cousins they don't yeah. know what's inappropriate so, so bring in awareness i was shocked to find out you know from uh, fr from law enforcement that evening that in, a, in our own public school systems we have school counselors who are offering kids money for sex these are issues that have to be addressed in, wow. in our community and lots of kids out here are vulnerable. They, they don't have much. They're broke. They, they, you know, they're raised on food stamps. 20 bucks, that sounds good. Yes, you know I mean? it does. Uh, and the enticement is so great for them. And, you know, I just mahalo you because I did see you on Facebook. And I called my girlfriend, Lois. I said, hey, <laughs> let's get out there and learn and understand and support Diamond in his venture to continue to educate the people. But I mean, we could talk hours on this and it's, but I know that you're addressing it. Okay. And so to shape for you and we're going to continue to support you and have more events that way. But I know our time is running out soon. So I just want to say, hey, you know, you're the new kid on the block. How are you getting your platform out and how do your and getting your constituents attention? You know, what are you doing? Well, our campaign is totally grassroots. You know, I, I am so happy to have the the ability to knock on doors to sign with to call people to phone bank and just let them know hey you know i'm running for office because i really believe that we need change here in hawaii and i'm sick and tired of being overlooked by politicians and so just getting our message out there like you just saw i'm so blessed to have the endorsements of, of many community leaders like bird wow. mahilona and and the fixtures of men ministries you know and lots of right. churches out here lots of pastors who are putting their trust and faith they in see your heart diamond next. they see and they feel yeah. your heart and you know what i just uh, plead for the people the residents of your district please Thank go you. out and vote for diamond garcia he's a diamond in the rough and he is the man that you want to guide your community and 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 in a very great way so we can mentor our kids as well so that they can become great residents and citizens so diamond i unfortunately we run out run out of time <laughs> and i could go on and on with you but just mahalo mahalo you. for mahalo. your heart and for you being so be obedient so good luck to you as you become our next house of rep in your district aloha diamond mahalo god bless aloha god bless.